Okay, hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Tonight I'm going to be in the garden and I'm going to be shooting four galaxies in the constellation Leo. Okay, hi everyone, thanks for joining me for another video. Tonight I am shooting the Hickson 44 Galaxy Group. So this is a group of four galaxies, approximately 60 million light years away in the constellation Leo. So because it's so far away, this is, this is the furthest target I've ever photographed. I think that the, uh, the galaxies are gonna appear quite small in the frame. So hopefully the image comes out well. I'm not entirely convinced that it's gonna be the, the best image I've ever produced or the most detail within the galaxy. Galaxy, but I thought I'd give the target a go. Now most people tend to shoot the Leo triplet and I'm sure you've seen a few images of that online at the moment. That's an amazing target in the constellation Leo. But I actually shot that last year with this telescope and the camera that I'm filming this on, so the Sony a7 III, and I was really happy with how that turned out. So I thought I'd give this um, Hickson 44 Galaxy group a go. So within that group you have NGC 3187, NGC 3190, NGC 3195, and NGC 3185 I think um, so four different galaxies and they all look slightly different um, and if I can get a good image hopefully um, it will look quite cool to have four galaxies um, all in one frame so I'm going to be shooting with the 2600 MC Pro tonight this is the fourth fourth image I'll be capturing with it um, and hopefully it all goes according to plan. Leo should be nice and high in the sky um, for the majority of the night um, before it sets behind my neighbour's tree around 3, 3.30 so I should be able to get four maybe four and a half hours worth of data on it so nice and high in the south um, and it should be quite a nice target to photograph. And the forecast is looking quite good um, there's a few clouds that are just starting to roll in which is a bit of a shame it's supposed to be clear most of the night um, hopefully they pass over quite quickly and I can can capture some data on the target because it looks from the from all of the apps it looks absolutely perfect for, for t shooting a galaxy tonight there's no moon all night long um, and clear outside to zero um, percent or zero clouds throughout the whole night so on paper it looks perfect I can see some clouds rolling in so I'm a little bit nervous um, but I will will try and capture some images anyway so I will give you a quick rundown of the gear that I'm using behind me which is all set up um, and then just need to wait for it to get dark and start to collect some images Okay, so just a quick run through of the gear tonight. I've got the uh, 2600 MC Pro, which is the, the one-shot color camera. Um, behind that, I'm using the ZWO focuser. Um, all of it's being controlled by the ASI Air Pro. Guide camera is the, the 219 Mini, and it's all sat on the NEQ6 Pro mount. Now the telescope that I've been using in most of my, my last few videos is the Skywatcher 190 Maxitoff Newtonian. Okay, so I've had a few questions about the Skywatcher 190mm and they've just kind of been what my thoughts on the scope and um, what the pros and cons, would I recommend it? I've had a couple of questions about are, why are there no diffraction spikes in my images? Well, this isn't a classic Newtonian telescope. This is the Maxitoff Newtonian. So this combines the, the best elements of the Maxitoff Cassegrain and the classic Newtonian reflector scope. So theoretically, and in my experience so far, it has produced completely flat images and completely pinpoint sharp stars all the way to the edge of the frame. And you don't even need to attach a field flattener. It does all of that um, within the scope, all built in. So there's no coma, um, the, sh the, the stars are completely sharp, and all you need to do is attach the camera to the telescope. And it does this because it's got a very big and very heavy front element at the, at the top of the scope. So I'm not sure if you can see this in the video, but it's got a very thick, I think it's called a meniscus, very thick piece of glass 
out the front of the telescope which, which allows to, to correct the image. It's a slightly curved piece of glass um, but it is very heavy and very thick. Um, so what are the pros and cons of this scope? Well it does like I say produce completely pinpoint stars all the way across the field. Um, it's supposed to produce excellent contrast and sharpness. I was looking to buy the Explorer Scientific 127 scope um, but I did quite a lot of research and asked a few um, different manufacturers and different retailers and they all recommended this for imaging over the Explorer Scientific and it was about the same price so I am quite glad that I went for it. Um, the, the downside to it is the size and the weight obviously so it is a massive scope it was slightly larger than I was expecting when it turned up um, and it is very heavy so without anything else attached the OTA itself is 13 or 14 kilograms I think um, so yeah it does start to add up especially when you put the focuser and the cameras and the guide guiding on top um, I've heard a few people online saying the NEQ6 can't handle this this telescope but in my opinion it seems to be doing just fine so yeah those are just my thoughts on the on the telescope i would highly recommend it it's given me great results so far um, one other downside to it before i finish this little piece is because it's so big it obviously acts like a bit of a sail in the wind so can't really use it when there's any wind um, but apart from that i would definitely recommend it as long as you're happy with the the weight and the size of the scope so i better get back to Alfie, who hasn't taken his eyes off the ball the whole way through that piece of camera, so they get back to our game of fetch. So it's midnight now, hence why I'm whispering in the garden. I don't want to wake up the neighbours. And tonight's been a bit of a bust, really. It was supposed to be clear all night long with no moon. So it's looking like an ideal night for astrophotography. But I think I got five, maybe six subs before the clouds rolled in. And it's just been quite consistent cloud ever since. Um, I have set up a time lapse as well. So I will be able to, to show you what the, the clouds look like rolling over. But a bit disappointed. But I will just have to roll over this video into another night. It does look clear in a couple of nights time. So hopefully I'll get enough data then for an image because um, I definitely am not going to get enough for tonight or from tonight. I'm going to let the telescope carry on collecting data because it does look slightly better later on around 1, 2 o'clock-ish. There is a little bit of a break in the uh, the weather forecast. I've had a look at the, the radar and it looks like there might be a bit of a break so I might get a few exposures then maybe half an hour or so but definitely not enough for a final image but still I guess that's the uh, the joys of UK astrophotography. The, uh, the weather forecast never seemed to be correct, but still I will roll this over so I will see you in a few nights time. Okay, so as you can see from the time lapse the other night, there was a lot of cloud, a lot more than I could actually see with my naked eye. So I didn't manage to get many usable subs. I did have a quick look through the data and I think I've got about five, maybe eight, five minute exposures, which I can use, um, but definitely not enough for an image. But luckily I didn't have to wait long. This is two nights later, I'm just about to set up now, go through my polar alignment. Um, it does look nice and clear. I can't see any clouds currently so hopefully i can get some more images tonight i'm going to set up another time lapse so you'll see the the difference between a cloudy night and hopefully a clear night um, and i should have an image to show you at the end of the video but thank you very much for for watching thanks for sticking with it so long um, and thanks again for everyone who's liked or commented or subscribed to my channel i do really appreciate it and i will see you in the next one